everybody, my name is Evan Manship with Mainstay Property Group, Midwest Cash Offer and Manship Foundation here in beautiful Southern Broad Ripple. I have with me a colleague, vendor, close personal friend, Mr. Kenny Hall with Live Indy. Kenny, welcome to the studio, brother. What's up? Thanks, Evan. Hey. Yeah, happy to be here. Dude, I'm glad you found that. I'm glad you found the way. I'm, I'm still shocked this is your first time down here in the this studio. Is sweet. You're building it out. You got it all soundproof, got all the tank, the lights getting hot. It's good. It is, it is a little, I wonder why you had that fan going until I sit right here and it's like, Christ, yeah, I know. Where's Spotlight. The, where's the makeup? The jail cell. Guys, we got Mo down here too. Mo is my six year old Great Pyrenees. Mo hangs out all the time at the office. So if you're a dog person, you're a friend of ours here at Mainstay Midwest Cash Offer and the Mansion Foundation. Uh, this is a brand new series to us, guys. We don't even know what to call it, we don't know what we're talking about. Frankly, uh, I'm tired of talking and being the only blabbing mouth on our social media channels. Caleb's done a tremendous job of capturing footage, talking about things that matter to investors, but I think it really makes a lot of sense for our social channels to get someone else's input who knows more about certain aspects than, than I do, and Lord knows there are plenty. So, Kenny, maybe just introduce yourself, tell the folks what you do, and we can start from there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Kenny Hall, uh, owner, manager, day-to-day, -day, run the show with Live Indy. And it's a property management company, or managing uh, just under 500 doors today, uh, about 180 different investors out of state, 80%, 20% in the state of in here, that kind of guy. So we're managing it. Uh, we got a team of six, uh, some boots on the ground, some virtual assistants, and we've been uh, growing this since 2017. I think we met Kenny. Um, I put so what? Let me back up. I met your uh, maybe uh, previous business partner, Matt. Yeah, current, current, current business partner. Yep, still, still okay. Forgive me. Okay, so silent business partner, Matt, 16, 17. Um, Matt and I got together, and then you bought out the vast majority of the company, to my yep. understanding, um, and uh, operate that thing. And we got together about a year and a half ago, maybe? Yeah, that's right. On Facebook yeah. or something. It was kind of like... Yeah, you were throwing out, uh, uh, I'll buy lunch or breakfast. That's right. That's, right. that's right? what it was. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> and I mean that, too. He's walking example. There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> I was like, I'll take you up on that. Low-key, yeah. there is. Uh, so Kenny and I got together and just started talking. I was like, man, for some reason, real estate got a huge gray hair reputation. A lot of 50 year old dudes, slum lords that go buy stuff at the tax sale and come back. And uh, I like young disruptor type guys who do things in a more technologically advanced and efficient way. And frankly, Kenny's group offered that in a, in a pretty high capacity. So I love that. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it hits right on one of our core values is uh, Unleash the Hustle. I thought that Tasmanian devil just spinning around, just, oh, like, yeah. you know, just destroying that. whatever's in the path, just hustle and get it done. That's what we're all about, because you got to be grinding to get this stuff done. You know, the right now we're at sub zero temps, and it's just crazy. The last week has been nuts with frozen pipes. We're up to over 20 tenants without water, and so it's like really hard right now. Where you put the tenants in a hotel, you put them uh, in like, hey, get the heat tape on the uh, pipes to try and loosen it up, and it's like, well, is your bathroom running? Okay, good. I don't have to put you in a hotel, but hey, you know, it's like. The main line's coming in, I gotta put them in a hotel. So it's it's tough. Unleash the hustle. You gotta be out there, you gotta be boots on the ground, you gotta be ready. Everything's coming at you from different directions. You gotta figure out what's top priority because everything's urgent. So you gotta prioritize it. And then that's what uh, say as a whole, maybe, but yeah, so yeah, it's certainly property management in the yeah, winter, yeah. It is. So yeah, that, that speaks uh, heavily to that unleash the hustle value. Unleash the push and forward. Well, talk about your group maybe a little bit more. What's what else do you guys offer? And then you said what that struck one of your core values. What are your core values and why are you different than a traditional property management group shy of the Tasmanian devil side of things. Sure, sure. Unleash the hustle. Uh, the other ones win together. Uh, so win together is coming from a team perspective. Love to come together, get things done all together as a team. Good approach. But then also investor to client and the property management side of things because it's like, yes, you pay me and that's coming out of your pocket, but ultimately you're doing a wealth building track when you're investing in Indianapolis and that's going to be something that's long-term beneficial to you and ultimately that helps fuel our business. So how do we strategically align that long-term? And I can help advise on your portfolio. I can help it grow strategically, put the right tenants in it, renew this tenant, don't renew this tenant, do this turn, make this upgrade. We can advise on that because of what we're seeing in the market from a demand perspective. So really like to be thought of more as a partner rather than a vendor. Uh, I think that's a differentiator. I, I don't just see it as door count. I see it as like, you know, 50, 50 first notes. Like that's, that's where it's at, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big one. And then do the hard thing. Uh, that one's all about transparency and integrity. 
I think this can be. That's a good uh, one. I like that. It can be a pretty sleazy industry. There's a lot of contractors. There's a lot of uh, vendors that are just in it to make a buck and put food on the table. And and yeah, their family is important, but like do that with integrity. And yeah, that's a little bit of a harder road, and that is a harder decision um, sometimes because there's always an easy path to just like I'm gonna lie about this because I haven't started about it. It's like, well, why don't you just say no? That fell to the back burner because there's so many other urgent things. Just talk about it or make it right. That Man, I, I, that, that resonates so much for our group, especially because wholesale is no different than property management. Sure, um, sure. I recognize that. I sympathize. And frankly, I echo that in every sentiment. Uh, even me personally, man, like some of the faults that I've had, uh, it's just been having hard conversations hard. Yeah. So I, I love that core yeah. value. How, how, how did you phrase it? Do, the, do the hard thing. Do the hard thing. Yep. I, I, I yep. adore that. Write that down someplace, Caleb. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So property management, done right, it sounds like. Um, and you guys aren't exclusively property management, right? You guys have some other kind of silos for you know, revenue sources or market pulses that you guys offer as well, yeah? Pro primary is the property management. Uh, you could say you've got kind of a rehab turn arm, but you got to support that when a tenant moves out. Do the light turns, uh, so we'll get a contractor in there. Do the light paint, maybe flooring. We're not going to do a big rehab, right? We're not going to do a full gut rehab. Uh, it's just out of scope. Uh, I don't find we're successful at it, so stay in your own lane. So that's kind of where we're at. And as far as like uh, the reason I asked this, I know I've worked with you in this in the past. Um, is brokerage still a thought process for your group, or are you guys just really doubling down on property management in 2024? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 2024 brokerage could change. Yeah, I think it could be a focus uh, and could be something that uh, has a bigger face within uh, the community, but not a property management focus. Uh, so the, the brand Live Indy is really focused on um, how do we support investors in growing their portfolio, and brokerage is a complement to it. Got it. Makes all the sense in the world, man. Well, I, uh, I, I want to make sure that uh, the folks, again, know Kenny Live Indy, and I have to be super transparent here. Kenny and I again met about a year and a half ago. Uh, I got challenged by a mentor of mine to just put it out there, man. Every other day that you're not networking, every day, certainly every other day you're not networking with someone, you're losing a tremendous amount of uh, potential, opportunity, and ultimately money. So uh, I had this this punk named Kenny Hall just schedule uh, an event with me on my Calendly uh, through Facebook. I'm like, I don't know Kenny Hall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this breakfast, and then we just hit it off. It was awesome. And uh, come to find out that uh, there are a lot of things that Kenny's group offered that uh, I didn't know that I needed. Um, right through this wall, in fact, right behind this camera right here, directly the building, directly the structure directly south of the building that we are in is a property that I own uh, where our investors kind of hang out and crash. But uh, when investors aren't, aren't hanging out and crashing there, uh, Kenny's folks uh, manage that thing and lease it out. So uh, 5171 Evanston, uh, managed by Kenny. Needed someone to handle that, and Kenny made it happen. Uh, we just got done with a, a retail listing that Kenny's group did um, on the east side of town. Um, didn't know yeah, a few, few investor listings. Few, that's yeah, right, that's yeah. right. We had, we had, we had three, three or four. Done, yeah. uh, I think it's more than that? six. I so think. it shows what I know. Well, we just got one under contract, so yeah. So should, should really shows here soon. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Kenny's group does a lot of the brokerage stuff just the same way. And again, didn't know what I needed until I had to ask somebody on speed dial who I really kind of could trust to make that whole thing happen. So um, that was really neat uh, change of pace for me. But it all started in something I want to uh, really pick your brain about too because I've seen massive success from it. I can't get the same thing through to a lot of my team. And I don't know what I need to do to make this happen. In fact, I've started a contest in my group uh, about networking and social media networking. Uh, to the person who can point to the most revenue they generate from social media interaction will buy a truck for Ford Maverick, 2025 Ford Maverick. Mm -hmm. So um, we're doing that this year. That's a fun fun game to play. Come work for MCO at careers at MidwestCashOffer.com, careers at MainStayProperty.com. Talk to Caleb, talk to Mike. How can I get the truck? Now, how do you get a truck, <laughs> uh, Kenny? Thank you. I want a truck. Uh, <clears throat> I can't get through to my folks that how important that networking side of it is because it there's is. no direct impact. Yeah. When you and I left Good Morning Mamas, I didn't leave more money. In fact, no, I left with no, less money, right? Did. Yeah, 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 because now you're paying me. Right. All $37 yeah. of yeah. our omelets. Yeah. I love it, I love it. So uh, talk yeah. to me about that. I mean, how much of that goes into your industry? It's, and not, it, it's not a monetary impact in the, in the immediate uh, it, in the immediate return right away. But you and I are creating a relationship long term, and Indy is such a, a big city, small town feel. Everybody knows each other. They're all impacted. The 
the monetary benefit for our businesses is uh, Evan meets an investor through his wholesales. And he says, hey, I've had a good experience with property management. You should check out LiveIndy. Sweet. That there is a mutual benefit that now I'm trusting you to great, bring me great referrals. And then that's going to come back around to you because now I'm bringing investors over to your network saying, like, you got to buy properties and grow through Mainstay. It's that kind of synergy and that kind of connection. But that doesn't start unless you and I connect and have the friendship that starts over breakfast. Right? Well, it, it, I, I obviously I agree with you, but it's it's funny because it's, this hasn't been a part of my life once or twice or three times or four times. But man, like especially like the more you interact with it, it builds on itself, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do it once, twice, three times, forget about it, and then it'll pay you back over time. Mm -hmm. So we all talk about passive income. Mm -hmm. We all talk about passive income. Um, everyone wants to do a rental or a, a land contract or a have, have pay money and have someone flip a house the money just shows up in your bank account but no one wants to talk about the return on investment that can come from a $37 omelet and I don't know well, about think, you think but about relational equity I think that's, that's what, what it absolutely. is I think that's what it is because I know that if I give you a call or a text you're going to text right back absolutely that's key right there that's, that's relational equity whereas like you and I are both so busy and our text messages and emails fill up but it's like I don't have to wait too long to hear from you hear back like we had that water heater replacement, and I knew that's urgent, right? So it's like, hey, man, I've got a... Need an answer. Need an answer. That was my favorite I, I got Need a, yeah, go. a $1,300 water heater you got to put in. It's like, yeah, that's a little expensive, but that's what it costs. Let's do it, right? And you're like, yeah, man, get it, get it done. And if anyone but you were to say something like that, again, nothing against your, your tech who was messaging me just the same way, yep. or my asset guy or whatever, but it was like, you know, that's not... I want to put it on the back burner. We'll get to it later and later. But when you sent me a message, I immediately got to my guy. What the fuck are we doing here? Right. And it was, oh, okay, cool. You know, zip, zip, right. zip, done. Priority. So yeah. as if that weren't an additional element or an additional upside of, 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 of networking, I'm talking about exclusively the numbers, something I can point to and say, mm, our omelets, my veggie omelet, whatever the hell you got was $37. Like, I know for a fact, absent of the fact that you manage my properties, absent of the fact that you listed six or seven properties, I'm absent of the fact that I have that relational equity baked into my, my life, my phone now, like, we did the OSIS thing, and you were sponsoring yeah. our event this yeah. past year, and that was a considerable chunk of change for you. Sure. Which I'd imagine paid off handsomely. Absolutely. So the omelet paid off for me from the sponsorship, the sponsorship paid off infinitely for you. So yeah. it goes on and on and on, and that's just in the last six, eight months. Yeah. So I can talk incessantly about this, and I hope that's part of uh, the, 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 the point of this conversation, Caleb. Um, but... Kenny is one of the more shiny examples of this. Frankly, I think we share so much in the uh, in common with how we see this industry and how we see the future. Well, yeah, I think you're not going to be able to grow a business unless you've got good people within it, and that includes your vendors, your partners, and your network. Because um, I don't think people should look at other people as transactions, and I think that's the key here. Is because a, a realtor might look at somebody as uh, well, they're an opportunity to sell a property and now I get to make a commission off that. That's more transactional. Whereas a, a property manager and wholesale connection end-to-end -end solution is more of a relationship and understanding the why behind why are you investing in Evanston? Is it a generational wealth? Is it a uh, tax return strategy? And you, you might say yes to both of those, but I understand why, and now I can help you achieve that strategy. And I think that's key there too. That's more partnership and more synergy rather than just a, well, now I've leased it up, it's transactional, collect a hundred bucks a month on it, whatever. Which doesn't change your life, doesn't change my no, life. No, it doesn't, it doesn't. But what changes our lives is, is are we, reaching a different goal that's five years down the road together and are we chipping away at that yeah and i tell our sales guys all the time much like i'm sure i tell them uh, or you tell your folks the man like it sounds cliche but hey the, sell me this pen sell me this phone you know like uh, -huh. uh you know, if you start telling me about the phone, I'm immediately out. Yeah. I don't need to know about your broker services or the software that you have or whatever else. But, you know, the people that say, hey, what, why are you in the house? You know, what's, the, what's the end goal? What do you do with the cash? You know, what's the, what's the thought process? You know, those are the people I want to do business with. And I think that's why we hit it off so, yeah. so cleanly was it was just a constant back and forth of, you know, mirroring yeah. to really get a better understanding of one another. So uh, I envy your group, and frankly, I respect the hell out of anyone in the property management business, certainly someone that does look like you do. Because um, uh, you still have hair, which is great news. <laughs> better hair than I have, good lord. <laughs> Getting some grass this last year, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Kenny is a father of one. Little Augie is going to be right. one on in April. In April. Yeah, that's so that's right. just been a handful of yep. Nine yep. months. Nine months, yep. 
And what's Augie doing now? Is he crawling yeah. in? He's uh, pulling himself up on stuff. He's uh, saying, Mama, she got the first word. Uh, so, lucky her. Yeah. Well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Good for a bunch of roll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was such a joy made up on it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, uh, Best title yet. Yeah, it's uh, it's the only job I've ever wanted. And that's 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 a fun thing to say. Is, yeah. uh, we all do this for the financial security. And people say financial freedom loosely, which I think is silly. But the financial security, I think, is at least why I show up. Um, man, like there's there's a lot of fun with having it with with, 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 with with being able to, to, to pass along to other people. I mean, one of our group our group's goals for up through 2030 is to make sure that we're 100 percent employee owned by that point. Um, so it's not just about again my daughter Elizabeth. Uh, you know, I love being dad, the only job I ever wanted. But also more than that, like I kind of like being the MCO of mainstay dad a little bit. Nice. With kind of paving the way. We got a handful of guys. I don't know, but that's a question maybe I have for you guys. Do you guys have incentives or? ways to assist your folks with getting more involved with the investment side of things. <laughs> if you do, I'm curious to hear about within, it. Within our local team? Yeah, with your local team or properties you manage or mm-hmm. deals that come through the pipeline or anything like that. Mm-hmm. For uh, example, if I may, um, we have something within our organization where we're not an employee-owned group right now. We're heading that direction. But anyone from our team can raise their hand and get to the front of the line of any wholesale deal mm-hmm. instantly. That's awesome. Um, yeah. If we hit our objectives and our metrics and our goals for nice perk. the previous quarter, thank you. Um, they have the ability to buy that deal at a discount, utilize yeah. our construction teams, utilize our private money, and blah, 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 blah. But um, people have the ability, simply because they work here, to jump in the front of the line and build equity, build long term real estate portfolio growth. Yep, yep. Uh, I would say for us, it's a uh, slight discount on property management fees. Bring your own property in and have it managed by the business hands off. You'll have at least you'll have the maintenance, you'll have the tenant logs, you have the inspections, all that taken care of for a slight discount. Love that. Yeah. I we uh we run something called self-generated leads. Maybe that's what you're discussing. But we have a guy, uh, Alex Robertson. If you don't know Alex, you should meet him. Uh, he worked with Fund That Flip for a long, long time. Um, Alex, Fund That Flip kind of blew up, which uh, surprised me you know, overnight. Um, and Alex came and joined our group. And Alex, in week one of working, week day three of working with our group brought two deals to the table. Mm-hmm. Said, hey, this guy was asking about money for this deal from another wholesaler, that deal blew up because the wholesaler's an idiot. But I know the seller now, and the seller should look at the seller's things, and I can yeah. we just go after him. Right. Sure. So we bought for A, we're selling for A plus B, and he's gonna make a third of that plus B, and dude's over the moon, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, shit, that's, that's part of the game. Yeah, if you know more people, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you know more people like this, <laughs> If you take more people out for $37 omelets, uh, the, high, the, 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 the odds of that go absolutely bonkers. So. I love it. Yeah, it's all about connecting, right? You know what, uh, if you know your buy box, if you know what's important to you, you know the why, you can connect those things when the opportunity comes up and it's so much easier to make that sale. Rather than being salesy on it, it's connecting people towards their long-term goal. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to find a way. You know Mike Burry and, uh, uh, or whatever his name is, the, the Dr. Burry or whatever, and uh, uh, the Big Short. Went to Goldman Sachs and he's like, I want to make an instrument to short the housing market. They all thought it was stupid. I want to make an instrument. I want someone to create a financial instrument for me to invest in. And I want to invest in the equity of other people. I want to buy an instrument that is, if you go and if you network this amount of time, spend this much you're, money doing these type of things. You're a cog in the whole yeah. thing. You're yeah. just like, psh, psh. it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time, yeah. right? Like yeah. you will, that money will return if you spend a thousand dollars on a bottle of Dom Perignon. It's going to be a little different. Sure, sure. But. <laughs> Thirty-seven dollar omelets exclusively, forever, every day, for fifty days. The fifty-day challenge. We're gonna do this. If anyone goes out and buys an omelet every day for fifty days and doesn't return it, I will. I will cut the difference. Um, now, internally, tell, tell me externally. about something you just said. Uh, financial security was important to you. Yes. A lot of people talk about financial freedom in the investment space, and I, I'd be curious your take on both of those definitions and which one would be more important to you. Because I think there's a difference. Well. Uh, Freedom gets taught, in my opinion, freedom is a buzzword. Financial freedom means you're free to do whatever you want. Uh, security, in my opinion, means you're impervious to anything that might have happened. So freedom, I think, is temporary, um, where security is more long-term. Security, you, know, you can be financially free and own Bitcoin. There's nothing wrong with Bitcoin, don't right. sue me. But, uh, you know, Bitcoin changes overnight, and all of a sudden you're you're working at McDonald's. You know, same with the folks that. And again, nothing wrong with the burst strategy. Yep. There are a lot of folks that made a ton of money doing the burst strategy, yep. only to continue. That's their only source of deal doing. And then, oh, market changed. They're not doing deals. Can't do it now they're toast. 
So security in my thought process is being able to speak a million different languages, maybe with regards to one specific industry. It could be oil and gas or uh, equities, bonds, you know, real estate. But uh, security is, look, I have a handful of land contracts, I have a handful of rental properties, I have a team I can trust with flips, I, uh, you know, I can do some hard money loans, you know, that, that's secure. I mean, if, you, if all those things change at once, it's happened once in the history of the world, I guess, yeah, maybe yeah. twice in the last hundred years. Yeah, you're talking a lot about diversification. Which yeah, is yeah. yeah, which is weird for the yeah. real estate guy, but yeah. No, I love that, I love that, especially because when the property manager calls the owner and says they got a $3,200 you know, water, water heater, heater. <laughs> that's expensive maybe that's a furnace thirteen hundred dollar water heater and then it's like that's okay go ahead and get it done because I'm, that doesn't change my life something i want to add I, i'm glad you mentioned this because i was talking to someone else about something similar it was a furnace but you're an investor guy you can speak the language so i'm just gonna ask you the question straight up if if you do a burr deal, and we'll put our burr calculator on here so people can click through it. If you do a burr deal, you take all the money back out. So let's say you get all your money back, and you're making an X amount of month a month. What amount makes that worthwhile in your world? Dollar amount? Or percentage? Yeah, dollar amount. Dollar. Amount. Obviously, assuming you get all your money back, so the, the returns going to be infinite. Where what I'm saying here, folks, yeah. if you're all into a property is a hundred thousand dollars, and the property appraises at a hundred fifty. So you go to a bank and say, give me a loan for 66% of this, the value of 150, they're gonna give you a loan for 100, you pay yourself back, okay? So you're borrowing $100,000 to pay yourself back, but, so your return is, you have no money into it, so anything you make is gonna be infinite. Yeah. But what amount of money makes that worthwhile to continue with the bird deal? For, for me personally, because I know that one property is not going to <clears throat> retire me, it's not gonna be a get rich overnight, I, I hate what social media has done with investing like that. It's like everybody wants to be an investor and you get one property and it's going to change your life. It's, like, it's just not true. <laughs> and there's so many expenses that are going to happen and so many unknowns and manage it the best we can and communicate the best we can, but things happen, right? And so I would say a minimum uh, would be $200 a month on cash flow. That seems to be the, the resounding theme. And my question now is, you know, for those of you math majors at home, $200 times 12 months a year Twenty-four hundred dollars in cash flow, um, and again, I'm not asking in a cynical way, but more or less, you know, twenty-four hundred dollars um, a year, even for someone that makes one hundred thousand dollars a year, as a two percent raise. So, what makes it worthwhile aside from the cash flow? Where you encourage your investors to buy, buy, buy? Oh, it's absolutely the uh, appreciation of the asset because it's a physical asset. And you look at the value of the dollar, you look at inflation, and you look at what's going on in the, the world and the economy, but the asset stays the same. And as land bound, and the land's going to appreciate, the asset taken care of is going to appreciate. And then you also have uh, a beautiful thing called uh, mortgage pay down by your tenant. So your tenant is paying that rent, which then you get the $200 in your pocket for cash flow, just put it away for repairs. Don't even think of it as money for fun or vacation until you get to a certain point, but you've got the tenant that's paying that mortgage down, it's creating more equity for you. So that's, I think, the um, the really big, awesome piece of it. So to be, to be real clear, I want to make sure I heard you correctly, because I, I, I understand this is hard for me to think about, because it makes me wonder all the time why more people don't do this more frequently. I'm sure it's will show up on TikTok someplace. <laughs> Property value go up, amount you owe go down, more money for it. <laughs> Absolutely, and someone else is paying it. Right. So yeah, I said I, I'm next in the news. So I, I'm taking a little bit of risk for the long term reward over a next yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah. And think of your cash flow as your hedge against repairs that are going to come up. Don't look at it as vacation money. Don't look at it as quit your W two. That, that to me is not the goal. The goal is generational and long-term wealth building through appreciation of the asset. Then have a handful of those things going at once. So get, again, yeah. you, can, you can do a comedy scale. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe your 200, 2400 a year gets to you know 10,000 after so many doors. That's great. You know, you're making a good amount uh, a month there. Um, but again, it's not life-changing overnight. Yeah. I heard a, a handful of folks, uh, and I don't want to turn this into a tax conversation, but a lot of folks will sit there and uh, demand that there's a massive tax opportunity that exists with single-family real estate. Um, I'm not a CPA, but again, I do know that uh, one over 39 and a half is the uh, amount of allowable uh, depreciation uh, per IRS tax code. So I don't know what one thirty-nine and a half of uh, $100,000 of it's not very much.
So that's your tax write-off for the year. For those of you looking for something to kind of look toward um, as far as taxes go. Right. Um, you can forecast that out through a cost segregation study. You, know, you take 27 and a half years out, because you could do the 39 every year for 27 and a half years. You could do a study and bring that all in one year. We've done something with this. We did, we did, we did a cost study with this building. We did a cost study with the, with my, or we're in the process of doing it with my event venue. And those things are massively important and cool. I've never seen my work for a single family house with you. Mm -hmm. Have you really? Yeah. Yeah, you can do, it, uh, do an online uh, appraisal. So you do an online appraisal, they go through and they just like, walk walk the house, whatever, and say yeah. this picture, that picture, that roof, whatever. This is yep. like a, well, there you go, folks. That was worth the price of admission right here. Take, Call the, sec. take the 27 and a half up. Yeah, reach out. I'll help you with it. Take the nugs. Kenny Hall, Live Indy, uh, property management expert, better guy, uh, best friend. Um, if you guys have any questions or how to reach out to, uh, to uh, myself or Kenny, um, I'll let Kenny spill the beans on how you can mess with him. And um, cool. we'll see you guys next week. Yep, yep. Uh, Kenny, LiveIndy.co. Kenny, Kenny at LiveIndy.co, Evan at MainStateProperty.com. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And thanks for swinging by. Thanks.